Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. The Lord is Salvation. That's the title of this episode and the meaning of the name Isaiah and also the theme of the book he wrote. As we studied Isaiah in Bible Study Fellowship this year, I learned a lot about Isaiah. Tradition says he was part of the royal family, and his father Amos was the brother to King Amaziah. Isaiah was also a scribe, so writing this book of 66 chapters made sense. He ministered in Judah based in Jerusalem for about 58 years during the reigns of four different kings, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Tradition says he was possibly martyred by King Manasseh by being sawn in two. Knowing how awful Manasseh was, I wouldn't put it past it. During this time of ministering in Judah, God used other prophets like Amos and Hosea in the northern kingdom, Jonah to Nineveh, and Micah to Judah. Isaiah was married, and his wife was a prophetess, though we don't know if that was her title because Isaiah was a prophet or if God used her to prophesy as well. They had two sons. Like in Hosea, God named Isaiah's sons to show what he was about to do. One was named, A Remnant Shall Return, a message of hope. The other was called, Hastening to the Prey, a message of judgment. Together with his name, the Lord of Salvation, Isaiah says, Here am I, and the children the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Even their names sent a clear message. But the book itself is filled with messages of judgment, the bad news, and hope, the good news. The Lord is sending destruction. You will be carried away into captivity. But after you return to me, a remnant will return to the land. And through that remnant, I will send the Messiah, the one who will save you all. His message was a now and much later message. It gave them something to cling to while they were in captivity. And in fact, all the way to the New Testament, when suddenly Isaiah's messianic prophecies started coming to life. And it all started when Jesus read Isaiah 61, 1-2 in the synagogue in Nazareth and proclaimed, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. God called Isaiah to a hard ministry. From the very beginning, the Lord told him, They won't listen to you. They'll harden their hearts even more. You won't be leading a revival. But we learn from Isaiah that success does not mean revival or even any kind of acceptance of the message God sends. Success is just obedience to what God tells us to do. As Jesus told his disciples, He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. God knew his people had hard hearts, but he still reached out to them. And some did respond, like Hezekiah, who sought the Lord, did what was right in God's sight, and led the people back to the worship of the Lord. But he also saw how Hezekiah's son Manasseh led the people right back into sin and rebellion. Yet Isaiah persevered. What a difficult life he must have had. As he preached and warned his people, he knew the fate that awaited them. Yet his message was full of hope. Trust God. He will provide. He's in control. Isaiah's call was to tell his world the bad news and the good news. That's our call too. We must warn people who are on that downhill slope like the people of Judah were. We need to tell them that their sin has separated them from God and there is no way they can get into a right relationship with him on their own. And the wages of sin is death. That's definitely bad news, isn't it? But the good news that we have to share with the world is even better than Isaiah's. Our news is that God sent Jesus to die for our sins, to take our place, 
so that anyone who believes can be saved. Isaiah prophesied that this would happen. He talked about salvation 47 times and redemption 30 times. But it's already happened. All we need to do is tell others. That's our calling, just as it was Isaiah's. We're not responsible for the response. Our success comes with our obedience. Who is God leading you to tell today? You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.